Alright, good evening everyone, welcome back to Pathologic. So, we've talked to a lot of people, they've given us some very weird answers. Wow, I love your clothes, dude. Hey you, don't mess with us, we know a thing or two about life. Uh, why are you so bristled up? It has begun. A crushing blow to the soul and a halves is being prepared. There are almost 70 dog heads. No one will escape their doom. So what are the soul and a halves and dog heads? The soul and a halves have a soul and a half, and the dog's heads have dog heads. As you can see, it's a clash of ideas, a matter of principle. It's an us or them situation. There will be no mercy. That's some fierce games. A game to some, destiny to others. I hope you avoid manslaughter. Okay. Um, are you not wearing a shirt? Okay. Um, either way, we've been given a task by Lana. Lara? Lana? Lara. To go and find the house that the children are using to make very ill-advised medications. Uh, which apparently is by the ruins, or visible, sorry, near ruins and visible from Ava Yar's house. Hi. You're just going to tell me the same thing, right? Everything will be fine. Yeah, okay. So it seems like any of the NPCs that look alike all kind of share the same dialogue. Hi. You told me about the house that was by the 12th warehouse. Although I have no idea where any of the warehouses are, so, uh... Literally could not tell you where any of the warehouses are. It doesn't really help me. I would like to see a translucent cat, though. Oh, you look different. What do you got for me? Nothing. I actually can't talk to you about anything. Okay. It looks like she might have dialogue options later? Unless they just, like, made her interactable for no reason. Now. So, where are the ruins near here? Because this is the river, right? Yeah, so that's just the river down there. You're just staring at me. Hi. That? That's like a silo tower, not ruins. We're at like the edge of town, too. Oh, here's. Nope, this is a cathedral. Uh, huh. Well, I don't really see any ruins that are visible from AVR's house. There must be some around here somewhere. It doesn't help that not a whole ton of draw distance here. Is this a shop I can go in? So that's what those signs mean. Hi. Okay, he doesn't actually have any dialogue. He just goes straight to uh, trading things. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. There must be something that's near that, that big tower over there, right? That's the only thing I can think of. That resembles a ruin near AVR's house. Sounds like I just go around trying people's doors it's very awkwardly and hope nobody comes to arrest me. I don't actually know what this is, because it doesn't look like any of like the rest of the structures, right? Oh, it's got a big metal door too. And a bonfire. And this just goes off into nowhere. Okay. I don't think this is what we're looking for. So we might have to just broaden our search a little bit here. Alright. Um, I feel like... 
Like, right across the river, I think there's some ruins, maybe. Should say the ruins, right? Many, like, fugitive... I can see the stash from my window in the still water in a house by the staircase ruin. Staircase ruin. Okay. I don't actually know which window is mine in the still water. And I can't actually physically go and look out them, so that doesn't really help me a whole lot. So this must be the stair. So this, I'm guessing, is the staircase run. Which only leaves a few possibilities for houses, right? It has to be one of these, one of these ones. Okay, well, probably this one. Can't open this door. There's definitely people walking around. Oh, I'll take some fish. I can always use fish. I just like stealing food from these people. I'm sure someone will tell me if I'm... God, the doors are so large. I'm sure someone will uh, tell me if I'm not supposed to be taking these things. Oh. Money! I love money. Oh, hi. You must be one of the dog heads. Oh man, oh man, I told them to escape straight away without tossing a coin. Uh, explain yourself. How are we supposed to find the schmouters now? Do we seriously need to detain every little kid in the street? What do we barter with them for? And we can't take the schmouters by force. Bullying is the yeah, bullying is against the rules. Khan would totally bite our bite our heads off for that. Schmouters? Is in powders? What are you talking about? Ooh, powders. Powders schmouters. Schmouters are sanative mixtures. They were invented during the first outbreak. The original ones were made by catchfly, but they were no good. The disease would pass, but the person would pass away along with it. But then Beaker's brothers made some nice ones. Crowfoots weren't too shabby, and neither were flankies. What is the first outbreak? Five years ago, something really creepy happened in the crude sprawl. People fell sick one after another, and rapidly, too. Whole district got infected in 24 hours, house after house. People would burst into sickness like matches burst into flames, and then, like matches, they would burn from the inside. I was a little kid back then, only six years old, but I frequented the tower already. And then what? And then nothing. There were little to no casualties among the children. We were in the tower when it all began. But some kids just had to get out and make themselves busy with the whole outbreak business. Invent schmouters, for example. And it worked. It all went on for several days, and then sort of withered all by itself. But the schmouters stayed. Uh, and where are they? Every single schmouter that we know of has been stashed away in a safe place here, so that no one would poison themselves. But here we are. No schmouters. Uh, maybe it's for the best. I don't even cross your mind to play Epidemic. Oh, okay. I guess we're done talking. Is there anyone else in here? Can I, can I talk to you anymore? It's only a mask, nothing to gop at, really. We put them on for the intimidation factor. I'm not gopping, I'm completely relaxed. Okay, I don't seem to be able to talk to him anymore. Oh, there's another one. Hi. May I inquire as to how you found this place, sir? Uh, I'm investigating the murder of Simon Kane. I mean, neither of these... Neither of these are really correct to the situation. I'm just gonna say by accident. We children are funny creatures, half human, half something else. Our inner world is off-limits to the adults. You can't see our real faces, just as you can't touch our dreams. Which is why we need these scary heads. See how it all works? I see that you are here, and have no idea why that is. Er, we're playing here. Rehearsing, actually. Also looking for something. We need it for the game. Nothing special, just some junk. Um, try again, and try to be honest this time. Yeah, well, it can't be fixed now, anyway. Alright, I'll tell you. Who knows? Perhaps you'll even be of help. The kids are in danger. They've come here to get schmouters, but someone has already looted the cache. Maybe it was Capella's doing. She's probably distributed among her minions, the pagan. Uh, Capella, tell me about her. Well, Capella is Capella. Even though she's our foe, we still respect her. She's luring kids out of the tower, trying to organize a sect of some kind. And they worship her, like for real. Well, that's understandable. She's the kind of girl you could even fall in love with. Too bad she's not on our side. Of the river, that is. 
Pa. Pride is the downfall of everyone. What you're saying is she's distributed the schmouters among the kids, right? The little ones are playing epidemic again. They wanted to get their hands on these damn schmouters so very much. So now we need to catch the kitties, and I mean all the kitties in town, one by one, and pry the schmouters from their hands. See, the common opinion is that schmouters can cure all kinds of ailment and stuff, but in truth, they're deadly. Why were they produced in the first place, then? An adult will be severely poisoned. They'll be bedridden for a week or so, and that's it, but it spells doom for little kids. How are children supposed to cure themselves, then? Children? All children should come to our polyhedron. They'll be safe there. Uh, the polyhedron? The specular tower on the other side of the river. There is no death, no grief, no boredom, and no disease there. That is proven for certain. Only dumb heads leave it voluntarily, if you ask me. You have to be an absolute thick and heartless creature lacking any semblance of imagination to refuse something of the sort. Alright, I get the gist. Okay, that seems to be it. This, uh... It's not really helped us a ton, though, right? So I need to find... Alright, that's both the same... Same kids in dog masks. So it seems like I need to find this girl that they were talking about. Just go ask some random youths on the street, because uh, this place seems to have given all of its secrets up. I can't go through most of the doors. Oh, hello. A fish hook. Sure, I'll take that. I'll just take everything out of this house. That's for the best. Everyone involved. Ooh, just some raw meat on a plate. Yep. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, this way? Alright. So let's... Hey, you. Small child. Reveal to me your secrets. Wow, that's startling. What's wrong with you? Um, no, this is helpful to me. Tell me about the tower. You don't need that. Why not? Because we won't let you in anyways. There's a secret room inside. Who is us? The little ones. Do you play there? Oh yes, we very much do. We also live there. We go on journeys sometimes. Okay, that doesn't really help me. Well, hmm. the tower is very locked. All right, we walked past it before, and the door wasn't even like interactable. That's how locked it is. Hi. Um, what's up? Stolen halves got an opportunity to catch their breath. This is good. Never have the time to prepare. Otherwise, we'd have to mourn our boys, and the halves would be orphaned. So one have just a catchy name. Notkin says it's because each of them has a familiar. A cat, a dog, a crow, or a grass snake. Half a soul more than a normal person. Or a normal animal. Hmm. I thought the locals believed that a normal person is supposed to have one soul. Isn't soul splitting only reserved to your step abominations by the local folklore? Are you nuts? The Shabnak don't have souls at all. Although, perhaps Notkin has finally done it. He used to make fun of the old legends, taunted the step, played spirit. So perhaps the Shabnak came to show him his place. What do they do, these soul and a halves of yours? It's a lifestyle that's larger than life. If you join the soul and a halves, you have to adopt a pet. As you raise it, you change. Then, when it's grown, it gets the other way around. Your half begins to take care of you, and so you're always together, bound forever. What if the animal dies? I don't know. No half has ever died before. What kind of a soul and a half are you if your familiar can die? They wouldn't take you in the first place. Animal lifespan isn't that long. Okay, well, crush this little girl's hopes and dreams. Um. Alright, so I don't seem to have the option to speak to any of the children further about this. Why don't we go talk to Ava while we're here? Let's see what she has to say on this whole matter. How are we doing for time? It's not even noon yet, we've got plenty of time. And now we have a bunch of food. Hello, Eva. I'm having chest pain. Oh. Oh, I see. I can read what other people have said about things. Interesting. Um, what are the ruins outside your window? Is it the stairway to heaven? It's on the other side of the guzzle. This ruin is the one that's closer to the theater. Uh, it looks better for the second floor. What are these ruins? They look ancient, but the construction is recent. 
Oh, that's an old dream of the Stamatins. They're architects, you know. They wanted to overcome the force of gravity. His ruins were kind of an attempt to do so. They're built by Peter Stamatin. Can you imagine? They still live here. Still haven't gone back home to the capital. Who are they? I think I've heard that name. Could you please tell me if that's not too long a story? It will take as long as you want it to. Although no one can talk about them for hour although one can talk about them for hours. Where should I start? They're brilliant architects. They built something famous in the capital. The three story Garden of Frozen Springs. Does it really ring a bell? The Cold Hall? Yeah, Cold Hall. I haven't seen it, but they say it's unbelievable. And it was they that have built the Polyhedron. Polyhedron is that tower on the other side of the river, right? Yeah, the new quarter, or the specular tower, they call it. Do you like it? Where does it stand? How is it supported? I have no idea, and that's the mystery. Everyone says it's impossible. A miracle. Yes, a real miracle. The only real miracle of all that I've seen. The only miracle so real you can touch it with your hand. Well, besides you, of course. Uh, okay, I only wanted to know more about the runes. I need them as a reference point. <laughs> Compare me to that monstrous construct. Okay. Alright, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. Is there anything else that I can ask you about? I had a feeling you would... Okay, no, I can't talk to her about anything else anymore. She's still going on about that ominous singing outside her window, which I... Doesn't see anything going on there. Okay. Well. Well, they did suggest we talk to Maria more as well. Hi. Uh, what are you so happy about? Yeah, the tower. What's inside of it? Oh, so we play there. Khan won't let you in, I take it. I don't know who Khan is. Okay. Can I see the tower on my map? Is that not... Because when I hear the tower, I'm thinking of this thing over here, but I don't think that's right. They said the tower was on the other side of the river somewhere? I don't think it's actually marked on my map. It's near Peter Stamaton's studio. I've seen some weird ruins around, but I'm not positive which ones are which. Anyway, let's go find Maria. Go ask her about stuff. Oh, hey, it's one of you. Don't mess with us. Um, let's see. Tell me about the polyhedron. That's where the youngest Cain, Casper, styled Khan, is fortified. There are more than a thousand children up there now. Almost every child in town went to the polyhedron, except for urchins orphans and bold daredevils like me. Are you trying to tell me they live there? Well, the older ones do. The younger kids just come by to play. But yesterday, everyone who's older than three and younger than fifteen had a huge gathering there. They're hiding. From the parents? From fate, bachelor. From fate. Good for them. Okay. So it's a cane who lives in the polyhedron. I still don't quite know where the polyhedron is. Also does not seem to be marked on my map anywhere. Whatever. Oh. Is this the tower? This has got to be the tower, right? Did it say it was on the other side of the river? Oh, that's the polyhedron. Okay. Can I go up here? Uh, certainly a structure.
Okay. I thought they said there were people living up here, but there's... It's not even, like, an interior as far as I can tell, so I don't know where they would be living. Alright. Oh. Back we go. Mystery of the Children is gonna have to wait until I've, uh, got a little bit more information to work on, because no one else seems to be interested in giving me anything. Alright. Where's Maria? Hello. Did you see anything weird on your way here? We the Canes have always been out of touch with mundane reality, but we were driven by love. Love can be furious, funny, and blind, but there's never a need to make excuses for it, is there? Uh, what exactly did you see in that dream of yours, the one that had to do with me? A truly terrifying battle is ahead of you. If no one has ever told you about your fate, I will be the first. You must know that I admire you in advance, regardless of the outcome. You will fight a foe that few can defeat, regardless of the outcome. You will clash with your foe like a dragon slayer, but your weapon will turn against you. Striking at the heart, you will end up with your own flesh torn. Every drop of blood you squeeze out of that heart will turn into a gulp of yours. If your foe escapes you, penetrates you, or saddles you, you will hear malicious laughter in your ears, and my crestfallen weeping. So it's about the murderer. Well, I will make them regret your tears, whoever they are. Okay, she also did not give me any information. Maybe I just need to go back to Isidore's house. I can find a way inside there. So I'm otherwise kind of stumped. Oh, very small child. Hello. I've heard so much about you. Um, what's up? You're really playing hide and seek with a man eater? Yes, and when I catch him, I'll eat him. Be careful, though. Everyone is very frightened. He's a good runner and he has strong teeth. A good eater, too. A gobbler, even. Sure, I'll be careful. Alright. So that's all we're getting out of here. And we can keep talking to them again to get different dialogue options, I guess. Alright. We're gonna stop off and have, oops, have a word with Yulia real quick, since her house is kind of on the way. Let's see if she can give us any more information. Hello. I keep forgetting the most basic things these days. Uh, let's see. Ah, I can ask about people. So I've already done... I have to find whoever it is that killed Isidore and Simon. I wanted to ask your help. Sarah wrote to me. We haven't done this dialogue yet. Let's see what she has to say. Certainly no better investigator than you. I never had a chance to search for a murderer before. The best I can offer is to fill in the blanks with whatever mysterious supernatural entities seem to be most fitting. Shabnak Adir is the simple man scarecrow. I would have followed a different narrative. What kind of narrative? Consider the circumstance of his death. It said Simon had locked himself up in the evening and consequently died in the morning inside the mansion in a chamber with some peculiar name. In this case, I would suggest that Simon was poisoned. By the Canes, I would have thought, but I know their family all too well. Their mutual loyalty is only rivaled by their arrogance toward anyone who is not one of them. They hold the princely sage who stands at the head of their family in highest esteem. They believe that a single dishonorable act will tarnish their name for generations to come. I doubt any of them would have stooped to this, no matter whether they wanted to or not. Um... Poisoned? How did you arrive at this conclusion? I don't believe you understand what he died in focus really implies. Do you know what the canes refer to as focus? You don't seem to grasp the semantics of the term. These are the canes for you. It's kind of innuendos of their fortes. What is this focus, then? Focus is anything but an abstraction. Quite the opposite. In fact, it is governed by mathematically rigid regularities. You see, no one but the owner of a focus may get inside. This can only mean that Simon had brought the killer with him, or rather, within him, since no physical object may be brought into focus either. How do you know that? Who doesn't? The Canes are notoriously passionate about all manner of synthetic anomalies. They will never pass up the opportunity to devise a Kunststuck kunst that would allow them to warp space, challenge physics, or manipulate optics. Metaphysically, a focus can be compared to a camera obscura. Do note that the name is not unfitting. No, it is entirely impossible for someone to get inside. A curious conclusion, but an incorrect one. Simon was disfigured and bleeding, his bones were broken. And you're also not allowed to eat or drink, but that makes one suspect foul play in regard to Isidore's death. He's been stabbed, after all. Um, Simon was disfigured and bleeding, his bones were broken. Is that so? Well, this does introduce a different perspective. Did you say Isidore was the last person to see Simon? The question is, who did he see before? 
The sun had not yet set when Isidore returned from the steppe. However, he came to Simon well after midnight. The question naturally arises, where did he spend the missing few hours? That is why I'm trying to trace Isidore's steps. I want to walk the same route, don't get me wrong, though. Was Isidore seen with Sabarov by any chance? He was, he warned Sabarov of an upcoming storm. Alright, let me suggest then that while he was in the steppe, he saw or learned something that he wanted to report to all three ruling families. In this case, either of the Olgimsky family should have been on his itinerary, especially since Barak was one of their own men. Really? Definitely. The Bull Project, from the abattoir to the railway, is controlled by the old Gimsky family. If Isidore's discovery had anything at all to do with the kin, Isidore would have certainly related to Vlad. So do make sure to pay a visit to the Lump. That's the name of the old, old Gimsky mansion. Another fitting name, wouldn't you agree? Thank you, Yulia. What would I do without you? Alright. So that's given us another lead to go off of. Alright, let's go meet up with the... Uh, where's your door? It's back over here. Let's go meet up with the old Gimskys. Ah, this is the old Gibski's lump. It is, in fact, a fitting name. Alright, let's see what we got. Well, it's some uh, interesting artwork right there. This whole place is full of interesting artwork. And notably, not many people... Ah, there you are. Hmm. Vlad Olgimsky. So my Haruspex is the Ripper? Funny. Ah, Bachelor Denkovsky, of course. Who else could be so dapper? I've heard quite a lot about you. Have you taken a look around? Be sure to check the state of the industry around here. We have our own ways. Uh, how curious. And what is the current state of your industry? Come now. It's a complicated establishment with a thousand years of history. A special approach is required to control such a colossus. See where I'm getting at, Emissary? Um, such business always leaves room for improvement. I can see we're not really seeing eye to eye. The project is special. Very special. That means common standards do not apply here. That would be very naive. Uh, you're probably right. Why are my children like this? Getting everything back on track won't be an easy task. I'd like to inquire about the fate of my colleague, Isidore Barak. About the manner of his death, to be precise. What are you implying? What is this manner you're talking about? Be so kind as to mind your manners. I had nothing to do with it. Didn't they say Isidore was murdered by a step demon, A Shabnak Adir? There was that thingy, a talon they finished, fished out from the wound. Right, a demon. Uh, a respect respectable negotiant. It's hard for you to believe, isn't it? It used to be hard for many. Take my boy, for example. A scoffer, if I've ever seen one. And now even he believes it's real. He went off his head a bit. You're in the steppe now, esteemed sir. It's eastern and backwards. The dead rise from their graves here. Clay dummies dance, and bulls talk. Does he know the steppe well, that son of yours? How do we catch this creature? There must be... Does he know the steppe well? He rubs elbows with the rabble. The butchers, a donkey, shepherds, and gatherers. Learns their tongue and collects their legends. He doesn't keep them in check at all. They even dare to come visit him within the premises of the town. If you see a worm creeping through the streets, he's definitely looking for my son. What's wrong with them visiting him within the premises of the town? They're dangerous, they're aggressive, and they hate everyone who isn't a step person. They'll jump you and kill you on the spot. They'll tear you up with their teeth and devour your flesh while you're still throwing fists at them. So if they're spotted within the town, countermeasures are taken. Uh, so what of your son? Perhaps he could tell me more about this creature. Hold your horses. You want to talk to my blockhead? No, you have nothing to talk about. He's not here, thankfully. I don't want you two to meet you here. Heard me? These are tradesmen's words, and I'll stick to them. Uh... Sure. Okay. So we want to meet with his son, if we can. Let's, uh, get out of his house. Oh. There we go. I'm making a little bit of... Oh. Uh... Hi. Okay, bye. Alright, well, I think that's a decent place to call it for today. We've made a little bit of progress. Um, so, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.